Welcome to Salcedo Paranormal. It is Friday, May 20th, 2022. And tonight I'm going to be talking about time anomalies. Um, for some of you who were here for previous live streams, you may remember me covering this topic in a stream. But um, you may also remember that the recording software um, had issues, so that episode never um, made it to the podcast feed. So that's why I'm doing this again. As always, you can find all the episodes of the podcast, along with links to social media, ways to donate, and then ways to contact me at the podcast page, which is Salcedo Paranormal at podbean.com. That's S A L S I D O Paranormal at podbean.com. Always happy to hear from you all, whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions or shows, or if you have stories of paranormal experiences, whether they're your own or others you trust, happy to either read them or have you join me on the show. Um, to, to talk about them. And um, starting a little bit of a new schedule next week, same times and everything, just um, one or two of the Wednesday shows each month will be a little bit different, and then the Fridays will be an additional news show. So the news shows will be Monday and Friday. The True Paranormal Stories from the Web will be on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then Wednesdays will be either regular or comic book reviews, or once a month, there will be a similar to uh, show to what I'm doing tonight, which is a, is a deep dive into a topic. Um, just to give myself more time <clears throat> to research and um, hopefully come up with a better show um, when I do those. Of course, um, anytime I have guests on that, they, um, their schedules are more important than mine, so there may be substitutions along the way as well. So um, let me get to this uh, article here. I've shared all three articles that I'm using for this episode in the stream chat, but um, of course I will also share them in the episode description when I release the um, this episode as a podcast and YouTube video. So if you give me one moment while I uh, get to the files and links. And we will get started. <clears throat> so just real quick, I will talk about um, my own experience. It's only one, only one I've ever had that I am aware of. With um, with time, and having um, basically having a time anomaly, I believe anyway, um, that I experienced uh, when I so I used to walk to this restaurant right in town where I live to meet my family there, my dad and my uncle sometimes, and whoever else was going to be there, and I got used very used to walking the same route. Uh, you took the same route to this place all the time because it was just easier. And um, so eventually I figured out how long it take. It took every time, just about. And it was usually rain. It usually ranged from ten to fifteen minutes to walk walk there. Even if I kind of walked a little fast, it would still usually fall into that time. But this one day, I walked there to this restaurant, and um, I kind of went into a little. I don't know if we call it a trance or just kind of zoned out a little bit as I was walking. And of course, I kind of came back to once I got closer to the, the restaurant. And I got in there thinking that I probably had about a few minutes before I, my family would arrive. Um, I figured I was just about on time. Somehow, I got there in about five minutes. Now, as I said, usually it takes at least 10 minutes to walk there. And um, 
it wasn't just roughly five minutes. No, it was like it was like five minutes. It was like I had ten minutes um, before the time that I was supposed to be there to meet my family there. So something strange happened that day. Um, I don't know how or why, but um, there it is. So and uh, so I've always been interested in these these kind of stories as well. I don't cover them uh, constantly. I sort of um, share them in the in the true stories episodes uh, as I come across them. But um, it's still something that just uh, makes no sense to me, but is always um, fascinating to hear about other people's experiences. And um, just a quick reminder, too, to everyone that listens to this podcast, I'm always looking for um, stories of true paranormal experiences, any kind of paranormal. Um, you can always just reach out to me and... and um, we can go back and forth about it, and then if you want to, I can share, as I said, I can share your experience on the show, or you can join me on the show to talk about it. I um, haven't gotten any stories from anyone in a while, so um, I'd, I'd always be happy to share those. And of course, as I always say when I make make this um, do this reminder, I don't have to include any names of anyone, or even any names of of locations. So, um, just keep that in mind. It's not about the names necessarily. It's about the experiences and getting them out there. Um, so anyway, just, uh, figured I'd mention that real quick. So this first article, all three of these articles cover some of the same cases, <clears throat> but, um, this first article that I'll uh, kind of summarize here is from, uh, let me see here. It's from mysteriousuniverse.org. And um, it's by, uh, it's from 2018. It's from Brent Swanser. Uh, really good writer. I've, I've enjoyed some of the, all the articles I've read from him. From him. Um, and very, he's a very good writer and does a lot of research. He doesn't, doesn't, uh, his articles are always good. They're not vague or they always have as many details as it seems like you can have in one of these articles. And, uh, so, um, so yeah, but, um, this article is from him and from studiousuniverse.org. And, um, it talks about I, the, the idea of time and, how we might not know exactly what it is and um, that it connect in different ways. And that's kind of what we're going to, going to get into here is some of these strange anomalies. That's what, 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 um, what basically we're talking about here is time not acting in the way that we uh, normally think it should. So, so now, um, there's the first story they mentioned here is just, um, about this tunnel in London, England, in the UK, that was suppo supposedly acted as some kind of a time portal, where um, time basically slowed to a crawl or even stopped completely. And this is this um it mentions a report from 2017 of this these uh, the strange event. And it's mentions another website um, called Portals of London. It doesn't have a link there, so I'm wondering if maybe that website isn't there anymore or not. I'm not sure about that. But um, basically, this is from another website that they're, the author is talking about here. But I found it in other websites as well. And it's, again, like I said, these articles, they all mention similar cases and some of the same cases. <clears throat> Excuse me one moment here. Excuse me, sorry about that. Then you get the switch in time. One moment. Okay, sorry about that. Um, but anyway, so basically there was this tunnel in um, this one area in, in London that was a foot tunnel. 
basically just a walking tunnel. And it goes under the the Thames River. The Thames River. I'm not sure how you say that exactly. They've been in operation since 1912, but um, the, um, in, in 2011, this tunnel was scheduled for renovations um, and repairs. Uh, and it was closed down to general traffic at this time. So I'm wondering now if there are stories of experiences people had where they um, they had strange experiences in that in that tunnel and just never reported it because they were so strange. And if they were just individuals or even one or two people at a time, they might not want to talk about it. I think the only reason, if this is what happened, the only reason that it got to be as well known as it did is because of all the workers that were at the site and worked there for a while. Um, started to have experiences there on a regular basis. So, um, let's see here. I'm just looking at this article again. I gotta... Also, this article does have images, so I would definitely recommend checking it out. Um, and, uh, it's, it has, it's lighted, it's lit, but it is kind of creepy in a way because it's, it is just a tunnel. It is, it basically has two, two sides to it. I believe it's just two, so people can go back and forth, uh, two sides. Um, and it's not very big. But anyway, um, so when contractors went to the tunnels to, be, to start their work, um, they figured it would take uh, only take about a year, and I'm sorry, a few months to, to, to do it, to take care of the job. But it ended up taking um, over a year, supposedly, a year and a half, which is odd based on the, the anomalies that people were experiencing there. Because many of the people that worked there started saying that, that there would time would go fast in the tunnel, but then when you exit the tunnel, it would only be a few minutes that had gone by outside of the tunnel. Um, so, and it goes into uh, personal experiences, experiences here. Mentions one of the workers in their account, and they say, that they were working from both ends and um, and they had tents on both sides of the, of the river and um, basically th that was so that you could go back and forth and get where you needed um, but basically I don't really want to it's it's really pretty sim simple it's just people there had almost like um, just they had time at odd where, um, like I said, they'd be go in there, and it would feel like hours had passed. But then they'd come out, and it would only be minutes. Um, and they even got to the point where they stopped using regular watches because when they would get out, the watches would also say that it had been only 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 been a few minutes. So according to this article, they started using um, egg timers, or basically the, the the kitchen timers, to keep track of time while they were in there. Um, so that's really odd. But um, so yeah, that's the first location that this article talks about, and um, went on for a while there, and it happened to multiple people that were on the site supposedly. So. Um, so yeah, and there was reports of people going in and out and being um, basically other people watching as, as like one person would watch as someone went in there and then came out the other end. Apparently you could see across the river because it was, was underground. And so you could see when people came up and out the other side. And it, would, it's, it was supposed to take several minutes to get through the tunnel, maybe longer, but they would appear, they would come out the tunnel, 
almost instantaneously. Um, so it's it's just really odd that that how that worked. So if you want more details, you can check out this article and and get more of the reports. Um, and uh, and then it it goes on to the next uh, thing they want to talk about here. And um, apparently, so this is a uh, another story about two men, um, father and a son, who went in 1981. Um, they went to see a house for rent in in a, a town in Ohio, here in the U.S. Um, they arrived at the house at six in the morning, and um, it looked like it was in poor condition, barely maintained, um, both the house and the property. But they went through the the yard and got to the house. Um, they saw, this is odd here in a way as well, there's other paranormal activity possibly going on here along with the, uh, or maybe it was the same activity, it's hard to say. But they heard, um, they saw, let me see here, they saw two old rusty swings that were going back and forth, and they could hear the faint sounds of children's laughter. But they wrote it off as being kids laughing from across the street. Um, although if you're seeing two swings swinging back and forth, I don't know. But um, anyway, so they go to the house and they find a door um, that they can get in. They find the garage, first of all, has a, a dirt floor. <clears throat> and um, they, they reported that there was this feeling of dread in the location as soon as they got there. And so they examined the house. There were no lights, working lights, um, in the main level of the house. And um, they tried, there was a door to the basement, and they tried it, but it was locked when they first came across it. But um, after they looked at the rest of the house, they tried that door again, and it was unlocked. So they went into the basement, and the feeling of dread, dread was stronger, and um, but there were there was lights on in the basement, and apparently it was one of those um, the kind that you have to pull the rope or the or the string to turn the lights on and off. And while they were down there, they saw the uh, saw this cord uh, being going back and forth as if someone was pulling it. The lights went out, and the door to the basement slammed shut. And um, they were stuck in there. So they somehow found their way up to the door and pushed it open somehow and got outside. Now, once they got outside, it was dark out. It had been light when they got in there, but it was dark outside. And... Um, they, when they um, got to their car and looked back at the house and just as they were, they were leaving, they said they saw, and this is a really kind of gross part, but odd part as well. They saw um, a lamb, I believe it was a lamb, in the garage, on the garage floor, basically dead. And uh, they got out of there, which is probably a good idea at that point. And um, they didn't go back there for a while, but when, when, at one point they did drive past the place again. And there was an, a sign there from the FBI saying that the property was off limits. So they don't know what happened there or how really what was going on there. Um, and I... That is one thing that's that's does not sound fun at all. Um, it makes you wonder. And some of these articles talk about this. Was it some kind of an experiment um, run by government, or because of the um, the lamb there? The couple articles that I read they suggested maybe there was some kind of a 
they kind of didn't really go into words, but they suggested or hinted at maybe it was some kind of a um, ritual or ceremony that was held there. Um, but yeah, scary, scary situation. At least with the tunnel, it wasn't. It was everyone was okay, and it didn't um, didn't really frighten anyone. It was odd, but they didn't really. No one was hurt, so or even emotionally, I guess, or mentally scared or anything like that. This sounds like it would have been traumatic in a way. Um, so yeah, that's the second uh, experience mentioned in this article. And let's see here, what else do they go into? Um, and they go into more uh, other other stuff in this article here, but I think uh, I'll leave it with that article. I'll leave that ar- article for you all to check out and and uh, read the rest of it. So um, there's some more interesting stuff in there, and and uh, so yeah, that's the first article. So again, I shared all these in the chat, and I'll include all these in the in the episode description. And um, thank you all for being here. I see you all there in the. I see you all there listening. And um, but yeah, so let me get to the second article here. We can at least at least get through one more, and then um, we'll see where we're at after that. Might be able to get through all three since, like I said, they do some of them mention the same some of the same things, or same cases. So. Um, so let me see here. Let me scroll down a little bit here. Um, but yeah, so this is something um, I'm really curious about. I feel like um, it could explain more haunting type um, activity in some cases where people are seeing other people from other times. Um, so. I think that's part of it, but let me scroll down further. Okay, so um, going here. Sorry, it just takes one moment here to find um, the next next place. Okay. All right. So yeah, there, there's this next one they mentioned here in this article is um, takes place in. Alabama in the U.S. Um, he had a, a farm, there's, um, and uh, he went out to. This was. Let me see here. I'm looking, trying to find the time here. Um, doesn't say the year right here, right away, but I know this is way back in um, the days of basically horses and carriages, that kind of thing. But. Um, so at one point the owner of this uh farm they call him this article they call him mr hawkins uh went out to um the market okay this happened in the late 19 okay so this uh, event supposedly happened in the 1930s so one morning um they mentioned eula i think it is is the name of the per- the the person that told the story. She and a bunch of other um, group of other young women were were busy uh, getting vegetables ready for market. Um, and Mr. Hawkins would leave the house and um, go get on on like I said his horse and go into town. And then at some point later on in the afternoon, mid afternoon. Everyone saw him come back, and um, the, they there's a gate leading into the ranch, and um, he stopped in front of the gate waiting for um, someone to let him in, and one of the one of the younger boys that was there went to open the gate, but as he was doing that, Mr. Hawkins and his horse everything disappeared in front of everyone. So this is multiple witnesses. And um, everyone was 
of course, frightened. They didn't know what was going on, but they didn't know what else to do, so they just stayed there. And um, about an hour, or no, ha half an hour later, uh, again, same kind of event played out, at least to start with. Mr. Hawkins approached the gate, and um, everyone was watching at first to see if he was going to disappear again. And of course he didn't, and he asked for the, um, for the gate to be open. And that's where that experience ends. Um, so, again, what happened there? Was that a viewing of the, of the future? At least a partial viewing? Um, hard to, hard to say. So, let me see here. This article mentions the basement case that I mentioned, and then the tunnel. Um, so, let's see here. I'm just scrolling down further. I think there was at least one other case in here that I could talk about. Um, okay. So, um, another one of the most um, uh, well-known cases like this took pla takes place in the um, it's called the Bold Street area of Liverpool in the UK in England comes from 1996 and um, the people that were involved at least in this article are, are called Frank and Carol it's a couple they uh, they went out one Saturday afternoon to do some shopping um, Frank was going to look at CDs and Carol wanted to go to the bookstore, so they separated. Um, and Frank was going to meet Carol at the bookshop that, uh, she wanted to go to. So, um, along the way, I guess as he was coming back to meet his wife, um, things changed. Basically, there was this weird feeling of change. And he saw a vehicle, um, basically a box truck or a van. And um, he said it looked, it looked like it was something from the 1950s, I believe it was. Yeah. So it looked as though it was from the 1950s. And uh, he remembered the name of the, um, on the side of the van, which was something like Kaplan's, along the side of the van. So, he went to this, um, this bookstore where his wife had gone, but when he got there, instead of it being a bookstore that, um, is called Dylan's, he found a place named, uh, and this is, I think you call it Crips, C-R-I-P-P-S. Um, and as he got there, he looked into the windows, it was a clothing store, <clears throat> not a bookstore. And um, he saw an, uh, another woman go into the store. And at first, um, basically, it looked, she looked like she was from his time. He wasn't really thinking about that at that point, as far as times and all that. But he followed this other woman into the store. And as they walked into the store... It somehow changed from this old um, store, this clothing store, back into the bookshelf or bookstore, bookshelf, and um, and he actually talked with the woman that walked in, and they both confirmed that they had both seen the store change um, back to the bookstore, and there was also. Apparently, uh, Kaplan's, a place known as Kaplan's, um, or company, in that area at the same time, apparently during the 1950s. So, um, let's see here. And apparently, so there is this underground, uh, underground tra transport system. Um, right in the area that is circular. It goes in a circle. And 
this article asks if maybe the, um, that energy going in a circle like that somehow might cause portals to open and close in the area around that circle. I'd heard of this story before. I'd heard of the, the that store, um, the bookstore, clothing store um, before, right? but I hadn't heard of the idea of the um, the underground transport system being possibly the cause of that experience. So um, that was really that was really a um, neat thing to see that mentioned in the article. I mean, we talk about this fairly often. The idea that <clears throat> different energy fields can maybe have different effects on time and space and um, all those kinds of things. So, um, so yeah, that was, I think that's enough from that article here. Um, so let's see here. I think that's where I'm going to end it though. The third article is going to cover a lot of the stuff I mentioned from the first few. I'll still include it, but, um, yeah, so I th think that's going to do it for, going to do it for today. Um, but this was a lot of fun to look into, even back when I looked into it then, and I listened to all the articles today. And, um, so it was, it was a lot of fun to look into this and listen to all this earlier today. Again, um, thank you all for, for listening and for being here, uh, whenever you can be here. I appreciate it. And then, like I said, for listening to the podcast and the YouTube feeds. Um, and I think that'll do it. So, um, I guess I will talk to you all Monday on the next, uh, Paranormal News Show. Um, so that'll be Monday night. That'll be Monday night. So I'll talk to you then on the next episode of Salcedo Paranormal. Take care.